it is Youth Month. Hello, my name is Tatenda and welcome to our annual Preachathon, which I almost forgot there, but now I'm here. Right, again, my name is Tatenda and we are going to be doing a Preachathon. We have Word of Encouragement, we have um, a number of our youth preaching. And so sit back, relax, enjoy, and we're about to bring the house down because that is what the youth do at Cosmo City Church. Greetings, my name is Trin Santuli and I am young and saved. Today I'll be talking about appreciating God's love in the wilderness. I'll be reading from the book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 11, that says, They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would, it would have been better for us to save the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Many a times when we pray for deliverance and for God to take us out of our place of hurt into healing, we tend to create images of healing and the journey that it would look like. But when he removes you from the place of hurt and he takes you through the journey, it may not look like how you thought it would look like. And in the wilderness, you tend to begin to doubt God and forget what you prayed for. But I want us to remember that God has a promised land for us. At the end of our hurt, at the end of the tunnel of darkness, there's always light. And we shouldn't forget and forget the promises that God made for us because we are stuck in the stagnancy and the noises of life. And we should remember that God is faithful. God loves us so much. And we should hold on to the love of God and to the promises of God and to the patience of God and hold firm to his word because without his word, we are nothing. So that's it. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Um, I will be talking about the love of God. Uh, may we please open our Bibles in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and it is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Okay. What this verse is saying to me is that the Lord loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son. Like it says in John 3 verse 16. And we live right now because of the grace and love that he has for us. So why can't we do the same? We should all love him because he loved us first in our sins and when we got saved by his blood. As it says also in 1 John 4 verse 19, we love him because he loved us first. So when, when, you, or when you love God, we should love him with our heart, soul, and mind. As it also says in Matthew 22 verse 37, and we should include him in everything we do and all we have because he did the same for us by dying for us on the cross. Thank you. Um, I greet you all in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Um, my name is Matthew, and I'll be speaking about God's love. I'm going to start by um, reading John 15, verse 13. It says this, greater, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Um, Christ's love was or is the greatest because he laid down his life for his enemies. He laid down his life for the people who hated him and the people who were continually sinning against him and for people who had no capability of being good apart from him. Christ laid down his life so that people may be um, saved from eternal punishment for the sins that they have committed. And so, as John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And, and then those who don't are going to perish. And some may, might say that, how can God be loving 
yet still send people to hell. Um, if by God sending people to hell, that still shows his love because God is so loving that he does not force anyone into his presence. So everyone who will be in heaven will be there willingly. And all those who do not want to be in God's presence, God is not going to force them into his presence. He's just going to let them be where they want to be. That is separated from God's presence. So above all, whether or not God sends people to hell, he's still being a loving God because he is the standard of what love is. Thank you. What is God's love? God is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. His love is not gained by anything. We do not do it in our own merit. The Bible states that God loves us while we are still sinners. His love abides from his infinitive goodness and mercy. God's love is instead fast and uncharging. How do we define Jesus' love? In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to verse 8, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It is not, on, it is not insistent on its own way. It is not terrible or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but with the truth. So we can appreciate God's love in five simple ways by showing God's love by listening, by showing God's love by generosity, by showing God's love by encouraging, and showing God's love with acts of kindness, by praying with for others, and it is possible to show God's love to everyone. Um, good day to you all. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today I'll be re uh, presenting my sermon on the love of God. First, I would like us to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 8. If I speak in the tongues of man, uh, yeah, if I speak in the tongues of man and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have a prophetic, if I have, if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. Growing up, I was told that God is love, and love is God. So whenever I read this scripture, I read it. I, I replace love with God. So... Let me just read the first few verses. Yeah. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not God, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and I have all faith, so as to remove mountains but have not God, I am nothing. If I give all away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but have not God, I gain nothing. Basically, what my editing skills have done is let you know that we are nothing without God and God's love, you know. So, with God, we are nothing. For as, for as long as we do anything that does not contain God, godly intentions, we, it will amount to nothing because God is the creator and he is the almighty. God is the way, the truth, and the light. And if we, move, if we stray away from him, we will not succeed. That is something I was taught, taught, told as a child, and I believe that is, is wrong because the love God has for us is not determined by our ways. 
unlike human beings, God will love us no matter what we do or how many times we sin against him. God's love is unending and kind. He will love us no matter what we do. I am not saying you should go and sin because God will still love you. I'm telling you, you to know, I'm trying to let you know about the love he has for us all. What you can take away from this is that if you ever sin, you should never be afraid to confess to the Father and repent against your sin because his love bears all things. Let us go to John 3, verse 16, a very well-known known verse. Uh, it says, and wait, where is it? 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that so whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is one of God's demonstrations of, of his love to us. He sacrificed his son so that we may be free of sin the eternal sacrifice. Um, let me go to Romans 5, verse 8. Romans 5, verse 8. I wish I had a phone. Ish. Ah, where is it? Okay. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Once again, this is just something to take away from John 3, verse 16. Ah, uh, yeah, God, God gave us Christ and Christ died for us. He bared all sin even though he had no sin. He, he died for us so that we may live in the grace of God, you know, because God loves us. Uh, my last verse is Psalm 144, verse 2. Uh, it says, He is my steadfast love and my fo fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under, under me. Once again, this is God's love for us. He loves us so much that we can count on him for anything. Uh, the love of God is unending and kind, just and patient, unlike humans. God will never forsake us, nor will he ever leave us. So we can put our trust in God, knowing that he will forever be there for us. Thank you. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My name is Hotel Khadebe, and today I'm going to be speaking about the love of God. Um, Psalms 17, verse, Psalm 17, verse 8. You, it talks about you being the eye. Yeah, I mean, so he talks about you are the apple of God's eye. Keep, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadows of your wings. So what it's saying is that we are created by God's image and we've always been created by God's image. We should not talk, I mean, we should not... Um, apply on the things that other people say about us, our appearances, because that's how God created us and made us from his own image. The next verse I'll be talking about God's delight on us, over us. It says in Zephaniah 3 verse 17, The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, okay. the Lord is your God, and I mean, the Lord, your God, is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight on you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. That's Zephaniah 3, verse 17. And my second last verse today will be Psalms, 1, Psalms 139, verse 1 to 4. It talks about God knows you fully and loves you. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. 
you are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it's complete. You know it completely. My last verse will be, God sees you as a masterpiece. As we've seen nowadays that uh, what's this young kids, young adults, teenagers now, they no longer see themselves as beautiful because they want to see others seeing themselves as, as if they are different from them, which is wrong, and they want to blend in. This one says God sees us as all as his masterpiece, no matter whom, where, and how you live. It's Ephesians 2, verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And so what I was, my verses were all talking about that God is always with us, he created us on his own image and always, and he will always be there for us in thick and thin. And wherever, whenever you have problems, you should always pray to him and he will always lead you, uh, create a straight path that will lead you to the light away from the dark. I thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Princess Mulife and I'm here to speak about uh, witnessing the God, God's love. Yes, so first things first, I would like to read uh, John 13 from 34 to 35, which says, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, and if, if you love one another. So by this verse, we know that we are supposed to love each other. By this, we know that we are God's disciples. The reason why we are able to love is because God loves us. Because God loved us first. Now that's why we are able to love. As humans, we never had love, so God came, Jesus actually came to planet Earth and died for us. That's why we are able to love him back, because he came to planet Earth to die for us. Uh, may we please also go back to uh, Genesis 1, uh, from 26, it says, um, Let us make men in our own image, in our own likeness, so that uh, they may rule over the sea, over the, over the birds in the sky, over the livestock and the wild animals, and over all the creatures that creep on the ground. With this, we know that God loved us so much that he created us to look like him, that we are one with him. That's why he says, when we love, when we, love we are his disciples. So we should know that we should start loving. After all, love is the strongest drug. So we should learn to love, love one another each and every day, through thick and thin, every single day, regardless of any circumstances that are happening around us, we are supposed to love. We're supposed to be loving one another more than ever, especially as teenagers, as youth. We, I feel like a lot of us are struggling because we feel neglected. We feel like we are not loved enough. So the love, we need to start loving each other. And as well, we know that God loved us. So we should know that God loved us. He's been loving us. He'll never stop loving us. Like he said, there is no, there's nothing in this planet that can ever separate us from his love because he loves us. He came to die for us. No one on planet Earth can ever do that, come to die for you just because he loves us so much that he sent his one and only begotten son to come and die for us and wash all our sins to carry each and every one's burden on planet Earth. I feel like no one can ever do that. So please love one another. Be, love one another, love one another, love one another. It's the strongest drug, and God loves you so much. Regardless, don't care what people say, know that you are created in God's image. God loves you, he chose you. You dope. Thank you. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, my name is Uwone, and the topic I'm presenting today is faith. 
Let me start at Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. Put all your hope in God, not looking to your reason for support. In all your ways, give ear to him, and he will make straight your footsteps. Having faith is having trust. You have to trust with your entire being that God has your back and that he will help you and take care of you. He knows what is best, but to truly embrace what he has planned for you, you have to fully trust. Our trust is not foolish, for our God is both faithful and good. Faith speaks the language of the heart. It is an expression of hope that goes beyond the conscious mind. Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 3. I hope, now hope is the substance of things hoped for and sign that makes that the thing is that the things not seen are true. For by it for by it our Father has God's approval. By faith it is clear to us that the order of the event was fixed by the word of God. So that what is seen has not been made from things which are only seem to be, which only seem to be. When you put your faith in God, you believe and know according to the word that he will never leave you or forsake you. That alone is enough to keep you strong. He told us in his word not to be afraid or discouraged. God gives you strength. He said that his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Timothy 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. This says, Don't let anyone despise, despise your youth, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in faith, in love, and in purity. Good morning, saints. My name is Blessing Masia, and I'm here today to give you a word of encouragement. I'll be talking about the love of God. Can we please go to Psalm 18, 86? Verse 15, But you, my God, are a God of compassion and mercy. You are very patient and full of, full of faithful love. This tells us that the God that we have is very compassionate about us. He loves us so much that whenever we go through something, he's always there for us. His compassion for us is a loving compassion that is, that is very strong. I'd also like to Go to Psalm 36, verse 7. Your faithful love is peaceful. Your faithful love is priceless. God's, humi- God's humility finds refuge in the shadow of your wings. God's love is so, so, God's love is so kind, gentle, and compassionate that it's priceless. God does not put a price on his love. Whenever we have troubles or we find ourselves in situations that we cannot get out of, he always puts us under the shadow of his wing, under his protection. Thank you. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> um, yeah, so today, it's my, my message is so simple to everyone. So to start everything, I will read Romans 8, verse 14 to 17 and it reads as follows for those who are led by the spirit of god are the children of god the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that so that you live in fear again rather the spirit um, you received brought you your adoption to sonship and by him we cry abba father the spirit himself uh, yo, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, um, then we are heirs, heirs of God and, co- and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So, with that being said, let me do a mini activity with everyone. Just take this moment and close your eyes with me. Um, Go to a place, your most peaceful place that you usually go to when you just want to bring yourself back, yes. Go there 
just think about the most peaceful time of you. Don't, it might be on a white, in a white, white room, on a white bench, it might be away in front of the sea, it might just be, you know, yeah. As at this moment in time, you are heavily burdened. You, can, you feel like the world is on top of your shoulders and you see Jesus Christ walking and you imagine him as you want to imagine him. It's up to you, it's your imagination after all. Imagine him coming in, he sits, comes to sit next to you and he looks at you and you know what he's already asking you. So you start crying and you just say everything that you wanna say. You cry out, you do everything. And then as soon as you gather yourself back together again, you look at him and the only thing you see is a person looking at you with so much love in, your, in his eyes. No judgment, no nothing, just pure love. And then he, he, t- he then tells you, uh, I have told you before, Bring your burdens to me and I shall help you carry them. With that being said, he stands up and he leaves. You open your, now, let's, let's, let's just imagine this. Now, you, your, 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 your burdens are, be, they are already being shared. Now imagine him going out. Now as you're sitting there, you're feeling lighter as ever. And now you know that whenever you need someone to talk to, you know you have a loving father, the most caring father there for you, knowing that he's going to support you through it all. He won't judge you. He'll never judge you. He'll always love you. And now you are just there, you know, feeling lighter, you know, refreshed. Now you're just ready to start your day. With that being said, um, I'm just here to tell you, take your burdens to God. Take everything that you have. Take, him, take it to him, lay it in front of his throne and just cry to him. Um, through prayer, everything can be achieved. Trust me, believe in prayer. I do. Yo, prayer is life. Anyways, uh, yeah, but then with that being said, I thank you. Hello again. My name is Titenda and I will be talking about God's love, the love of God. And we are going to be firstly talking about Um, experiencing God's love in its fullest in such a way that you have nothing to fear. Uh, 1 John 4 verse 18 says, such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is fear. It is for fear, for punishment. Um, And this shows that we are not fully experienced. um, We have not fully experienced his perfect love. When you love something, all fear sort of subsides to the side and you don't, like, you don't possess fear inside of you when you love. And this is how God is with us, which means we don't have any jurisdiction to fear him because he loves us so much that he has expelled all kind of fear, which means we can go to him with whatever problems that we have, with whatever issues, even the tiniest little my nail broke. Um, it, it is valid, which means so such kind of a love is so full in how it is that it takes away all of our fears and it eradicates any fears that we have and we are made whole in the love. Um, When you understand that God loves you no matter what, there's no need for you to fear of your failings or fear of your surroundings um, because that makes it, what's the word? lesser than, and we know that God loves us so much that he gave us literally his only son. Um, And so their fear goes out the window, chuck it, because God loves you, and he doesn't care that you have broken a glass, or he's not going to shout at you for breaking a glass, or whatever the case is. He knows that you are human, and you make mistakes. As long as you bring your, 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 your fears to him, he will you're good to go, I promise you. Um, another topic that we're, well, not topic, but like point that we're going to talk about is God's love and how great it is that we don't actually fully understand it, which is why I think sometimes we fear because we don't understand how much God loves us. Um, Ephesians 3 verse 18 to 19 says, and you may have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Once you understand just how much he loves you, then you will understand that there's nothing that can separate you from God. Like it can be, I don't know, this wide, or as long as this tripod, or 
it, it doesn't it doesn't matter he's his love is so full it's actually too much for us to fully comprehend just how much he loves us which essentially means that we chuck all fear out the door and we learn to understand that god loves us so much um i don't think I mean, it's difficult for us as humans to give away our favorite thing in the world. Imagine having to give away your actual child. Um, that's big for me. So um, as we wrap this up, thank you so much for being here, for watching with us. And remember, God loves you. And he loves you so much that he is willing to change everything just to make sure that you know that you are loved. From me to you. Goodbye. Happy Youth Month. <laughs>